Welcome back to the What's the Dill podcast. I'm your host, Pete Dill. This is episode 77, and today we're going to talk about why you might be unhappy and why this Thanksgiving is the perfect opportunity to change that around in your life. Okay, so this is being released on Thanksgiving morning. I've obviously recorded this a little bit before, but it's a wonderful, wonderful holiday every year that we have in Thanksgiving here in America. I know it's a lot of people's favorites. I feel like Thanksgiving is one of those um, holidays. It's a little like in be- it's a little underrated. People, you know, really obviously love Christmas and the decorations and the spirit and Jesus's birth. There's a lot of like uh, you know spiritual uh, undertones of the holiday and the music and the movies. Thanksgiving kind of goes under the radar, but I've I've heard I've heard the people I've seen you out there I've heard you who have spoken up for Thanksgiving on behalf of Thanksgiving I've heard all of you I've heard your arguments about the kind of short condensed holiday of no expectations just eating just family just friends just food and it's a valid argument it is a good good argument so I've heard you all you Thanksgiving. Defenders, I've heard your arguments for why this thanks, why Thanksgiving is arguably the best holiday. So, Thanksgiving obviously is a um, time to spend with friends, family, and give thanks for our country, but also give thanks for those around us and have a deeper, more profound, um, a day of being more profound, profoundly grateful for our our lives and the things in our lives. So, why does this? connect to the title of the title why does this connect to the title of this episode you know don't be so unhappy things this thanksgiving well i'll get into the connection in a little bit and i'm going to talk about my solution for not being unhappy but first i want to establish the problem here and i've noticed a lot of Unhappiness. Maybe you feel some unhappiness. Unhappiness is something that I think is pervasive in our culture, in our society. People are walking around in a state of unhappiness. Now, we know that happiness is a fleeting emotion. Happiness is not something that we just um, can always be in a state of. Oh, I'm always happy. I'm always happy. It's like, are you? Guy who's always happy? Really? What kind of skeletons do you have in that closet? Because you can't always be happy. We know, we, you know, we know that our, our emotions go up and down based on our circumstances, um, the things happen in our lives. We know that as we're, you know, sometimes we're really happy with, you know, our, how our life's going. Sometimes we're unhappy with how our life's going. We try to be happy and create a mindset that says, hey, even with changing environments, even with changing um, emotions, I'll still try to be happy. But happiness is still a fleeting emotion. But I think I've noticed a lot of unhappiness in the world recently. Not as like individuals. I'm not going to start pointing to people. Oh, yo, this dude over here, this dude is just miserable. Yo, bro, come over here. Tell me how miserable you are. Yo, sis, come here. Tell the people how miserable your life is. Not that. But there's been so many pressures on our society the past few years. And I think the kind of the mounting pressures or the mounting expectations, the social pressures have put strains on personal relationships, have put strains on, you know, how our life goes. So obviously there's a lot that's been happening in a few years and I've just noticed individually and I've noticed societally, there's a lot of unhappiness out there, unhappiness with where our life is at. I mean, think about, we just got out of the uh, crazy pandemic. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on here. I don't know if like there are, is AI scanning these videos and, and audio and they're going to like ping some, uh, some hot button words, but we obviously just got out of the pandemic and that took a toll on everyone emotionally. I mean, think back to Thanksgiving a few years ago. Think back to Christmas a few years ago. Remember how crazy it was? People were getting sick. Plans were being changed. The world was just at at such a strained, strained, crazy, crazy time. Just got out of a pandemic that took tolls on people's lives, people's schooling, people's work. 
People changed cities, lost jobs. People didn't have normal high school experiences or college experiences and basketball seasons were canceled and proms were canceled. Normal milestones in lives in people's lives were canceled or erased because of the pandemic. You know, that takes a toll. You look and see movies of kids having prom and you might be like, yeah, I never had a prom. You see kids walking around a stage thanking everyone for getting a graduation diploma. promo. Yeah, I did it. I graduated college. Maybe you never had a graduation like that. That moment was taken from you because of the pandemic. Maybe you've been a remote worker your entire young professional career and you just, you've never felt connected to a job or a community within your city. And you've never felt like you've been able to plant your feet and start planting your roots as a young professional because you're a remote worker and your team is over on the West Coast, you're in the East Coast. Maybe you lost your job because of the pandemic and you've never been able to really get back going. Maybe you were in the service industry and your, your restaurant shut down and you spent your entire life trying to build this restaurant and just shut down like that. So the pressures just of the pandemic, I think have made people, you know, have taken a toll on people. There's mounting financial pressures on top of that stuff. The housing market, interest rates are up, you know, jobs are less, the economy, all of these things that are, in, you know, in our face, at least it's in my face. You know, I read about these things, um, you know, the economy, it's good. Is it bad? Why the economy is good? Why people are overstating the economy is bad? Dude, this economy stinks. Housing are more expensive than ever. Housing is more expensive than ever. It's the least affordable housing has been in 50 years. Limited job opportunities. I want upward mobility. I can't get ahead in my job. There's too many, you know, isms stopping me from getting ahead in my job. You know, stuff's more expensive than ever. And I'm not, and wages are staying the same. That, you know, that speaks to me. I know that one speaks to me. You know, uh, not enough money coming in. Stuff's getting more expensive. You know, that can, that can put a lot of pressure on people. You know, there's a greater global awareness of the world because of, because of social media and then 24 hour news cycle and all of this information that's in our face, we see everything. We know every bad thing that's happening in the world and it takes a toll on our minds and our emotions and our happiness. I mean, obviously, um, what it's horrible what's going on over in the Middle East right now. But then you also throw in the news and you see stuff happening in Central America, in parts of Amer you know, the United States and Europe, and there's riots and fightings and famines and wars and, you know, uh, stolen elections and, and uh, uh, you know, yeah, corrupt governments. And this country attacked this country and there's a tsunami over here. And we see it all the time. And that's what news promotes to us. We're like, oh my gosh, there's a mudslide over in Asia. I'm like, I can't handle this. And I'm seeing the pictures. I'm just like, I can't go to work. I can't be working right now. I'm seeing these pictures of a mudslide over in Asia. I, I, I can't handle it. How am I supposed to work when I'm seeing a, the mudslide in Asia right now? It's like, there's so much information. Now I'm taking that on. I'm, I'm taking on these images. I'm taking on these these tragedies that I see across the world and it affects me. And I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? What are we doing in our world? What are we doing in our society? I think you probably know that feeling where you see these tragedies that happen across the world and you're like, all right, well, this is crazy. The, yeah, more sadness, more tragedies. It takes a toll on our emotions, it takes a toll on our happiness. Politics is more divided than ever. You know, you can't even, you know, you can't even say anything anymore. But, uh, no, you know, the uncle at a, the uncle at Thanksgiving today, or maybe just a couple days ago, you know, we can't even say anything anymore. Um, you know, politics is hot. Politics is a hot thing. You can't talk about politics in fear that maybe someone's going to be upset or report you or cancel you or whatever. You can't just have political opinions anymore. It reflects how you think about the world and reflects how you think about everyone else. If you say one thing about politics. <clears throat> you know, those are the external things that are happening that are affecting our happiness. Those are the external factors 
that affect our emotions and affect our happiness every day. And all of those things are in our faces every day. All of those things are a result of being in our faces every day. And that, that affects us. I think those, you know, that's affecting people more and more than ever. You know, political pressure, you know, financial strains, political division, international news on, you know, on top of us 24-7, tragedies in front of our faces 24-7, seeing on social media how people treat each other 24-7, um, you know, uh, yeah, the, the trying to, trying to get out of the chains of the pandemic still affecting people. All those are external, external things that affect us. And I think have affected the general mood of people, the general happiness of people. Now let's talk about the personal. So that's the stuff that just affects. Now let's talk about the personal stuff. We all know that life is hard, you know, on top of everything that, we just talked about externally. Life, life's also can just be hard. How do we then, you know, uh, uh, deal with ourselves? You know, there's family strains in the world. Families are crumbling. Divorce is happening. Um, divorce is happening. You know, people are cheating on each other. There is families are broken. You know, strained relationships, broken relationships within families that are still intact. Uh, you know, having families is hard. There are a lot of different opinions, a lot of different opinions at Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, you, you're going to see it or you just saw it, that people got a lot of opinions around the Thanksgiving table. And, you know, dealing with those personally can, can be challenging. It can be, a, it can strain our emotions. I think personal expectations we have for ourselves can be hard to deal with. Maybe your 18 years old and you're in high school and you thought you would have a higher GPA. You thought you'd have more friends. You thought you would be at a better position to go to a better college. You thought, oh my gosh, I, my high school experience did not go where I thought it was going to go. I didn't have as many friends. I don't have as many great, bad, I don't have as good grades as I wanted. I don't have all the things I thought was going to happen work out for me. How am I ever going to recover from this? Maybe you're in college and you're graduating, you're in college and you're still trying to find your tribe, your community, and you're not, don't have as many friends, or it's you're feeling homesick for the first time. Or you're struggling to handle the workload of college. Maybe you're a young professional and you are in a new city. Now you're not a kid anymore and it's boring and you feel like this is, I'm just going to work every day for the rest of my life and that's it. This mounting pressure of just the monotony of life oh my gosh, I just have to work every day and, and, and that's it. And, you know, maybe make some friends hanging on the weekends. Maybe you're facing this pressure. Maybe you're in your 30s and you feel like your life hasn't turned out the way you thought it would. You didn't achieve the success you wanted. The dreams that you had when you were younger have not been achieved. You feel like, well, I've let myself down. Maybe you're a little older. Maybe you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s and you have... Yeah, hard relationships with your kids. Maybe one of your kids isn't talking to you. Maybe you don't see your grandkids. Maybe kid, your, your relationships have now, that your friendships that you've had over the years are gone. They disintegrated. People have moved. People have gone on with other things in their life and you're left feeling a little lonely. We all have these personal pressures that we feel every day that, you know, we don't talk about a lot. You know, no one talks about you know, uh, not living up to our own expectations. No one's saying, hey, how, hey, Pete, fill me in on if you're living up to your own expectations as a person. How are you feeling with that? You doing good? It's like, all right, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot of questions, brother, on Thanksgiving, but okay, let's get into failed expectations. No, I'm just playing. Um, you know, so, you know, these, you know, that, I think that's very real. I know a lot of us feel that, those kind of personal pressures we have in ourselves. So there's like societal pressures, there's personal pressures we feel. And the result, I think, is a lot of people walking around unhappy. People are walking around every single day feeling more unhappy than ever. Maybe that's you. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's someone you know. But I've noticed a level of unhappiness in the world more extreme than ever. 
We're not even allowing ourselves to like enjoy things anymore. You can't even enjoy anything anymore without someone saying, hey, you can't, why are you having so much fun when you know there's horrible things going on in the world? How can we celebrate these great things when there's people suffering over here? Why would we have a Super Bowl if there's kids starving in China or there's inequality in our country? You know this type of thinking. You know this disposition of unhappiness in our society. And it affects everyone of every age. Young people, middle-aged people, old people, kids. You know, you hear about stats about kids, you know, having higher levels of depression and anxiety and struggling with school more than ever. You know, bullying's hi higher than ever. There's like more anti-bullying campaigns than ever, but kids are getting bullied more than ever on, cy you know, cyber, cyber bullying, on the cyber webs. Um, so, yeah, there's a level of unhappiness that I think exists that I hope I'm accurately talking about and you understand. I hope you know what I'm saying. That, that state of mind, that disposition. So what do we do? All right. Just laid it out. Feeling super depressed? I hope, you know, you might be depressed right now. Just what I said. Maybe you feel, you maybe got a tear coming down your eyes. You're feeling massively depressed right now. So what do we do about it though? What do we do about it? And how is it connected to Thanksgiving? The greatest solution for unhappiness in your life is gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude is the ultimate antidote for unhappiness in your life. Gratitude. Being grateful for the things that are in your life, good, bad, and ugly, is the greatest way to achieve happiness. Now again, we're not talking about joy, joy in the Lord that we get from him, knowing he's our savior and he has saved us, and that joy, that state of life, joy. We know that. But I'm also talking about that feeling of saying you're driving in your car and maybe you have more than you've ever had in your life and you're saying, why am I not happy? Why do I feel like I want more? Why do I feel like I need more? Or that feeling of looking at the things that you've done in your life, the things that you've achieved, you're saying, but I, I, just, I just need more. I'm talking about that feeling and that emotion of unhappiness that pulls us away from the present. Think about that battle for staying in the present moment. It's fierce thinking about the past and what we could have done different, thinking about the future, how we can get a better future, both are pulling us away from the present moment to just be present and be, be, be happy with what God has given us. The past and the future are pulling us away from being happy and present in this very moment. So, I like to say that gratitude is the ultimate antidote for unhappiness because gratitude shifts our mindset. Being grateful shifts our mindset to say, things have happened in the past, things are going to happen in the future, I'm gonna stay present, I'm gonna change my perspective to not worry so much about the future, be anxious about the past, but I'm gonna to try to stay present and just be grateful for what I have right now. Gratitude can actually be an action. Gratitude is an action to keep us present. Change our perspective right now. I'm not talking about being the Dalai Lama in 20 years. I'm talking about right now, this very second. You might be unhappy. You might be thinking about something you've got to do, something you wish to achieve, something you wish you had, someone you've got to text, someone you've got to talk to, regretting last night. Maybe you went and drank too much last night on that uh, Wacky Wednesday or whatever it's called, Blackout Wednesday. And you're regretting that being in the present moment helps reframe our challenges as opportunities to grow and helps get forgiveness in the past to help move us forward and be free from the change of the past. <clears throat> being being grateful, having an attitude of gratefulness, having an attitude of gratitude, Say the catchy phrase, right, Pete? Don't just say attitude of gratefulness. Say an attitude of gratitude. Say the catchy phrase. Having an attitude and disposition of gratitude keeps me focused on all of the things I've been given and not worrying about the things that I want. Because that feeling of want, that feeling of more, 
that 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 poison of wanting more is brutal. And I know I've fallen into this. I've had my life is so good. I've had so many more things than I've had 10 years ago. I've achieved things in my life. I've gotten literally more physical things, you know, like that, you know. Ah, coffee mugs, you know, I live in a great apartment in a great city, have a great job. I, I have things in my life. I have a coffee maker, I have, you know, couches and a TV right there in the background. I, ha I have things. But I'll drive to work in the morning thinking about the things I want. Thinking about the things I need for the future. I'll put my head down at night on a comfortable bed in a climate controlled room and think, oh man, I really hope I get something more tomorrow. I hope I can get that thing I really want, that toy I really want, that promotion I really want, that car I really want, that relationship I really want. I want that more. I want, I like what I have now, but I want more. So gratitude can help fight against the poison of wanting more. It keeps us present and grateful for all of the things we've given. All I have to do is literally physically look back. I can look back at all the things I've, 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 I have all the things that God has blessed me with right there. You see TV, Wonderful couch, a little, I got a little crazy wall art thing on the wall right there. All I have to do for me right now is physically look back at all I've been given and be grateful for that and trust that God's going to continue to provide for me in the future because he has, and I just have to look back at it. So gratitude can keep us present in the moment and change our perspective from wanting more and keeping it real about what we have and what we've been given and trusting that God is going to provide for us in the future. So we've got to watch out for that poison of wanting more, that poison of more. Oh, I just need a little bit more and then I can be happy. I just need a little bit more money and then I'll really start living. I just need a little bit more respect and then I'll feel confident in my life. I just need a little bit more room to live and then I'll really start living then I can really start being happy. I just need a couple more things, a couple more relationships in my life. I need a couple more people to love me and then I'll start living and then I'll be happy. I can't really be happy right now, but I'll be happy in the future. I just need a little bit more. We all know that thinking and gratitude for what we've been given and looking back and taking stock of those things is so important and can help us be happy. Gratitude can also help us. Gratitude can help us uh, look at. Gratitude can help us look at other people with love, with greater love, and not just ourselves. Because when we're really unhappy, when we're unhappy with how things are going, when we're unhappy with the state of our life, we just look in on ourselves. We just look inward and we just say, oh, I, all the things going on in my life, uh, you know, I just think about myself. I'm self-centered. Okay, how can I change it? How can I get it? How can I, how can I, 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 I. But we all know that when we take the focus and attention off of ourselves and give it to other people and serve other people and interact and live in love with other people, that's when life's really good. You might say, hey, you know what? My car broke down, but I got, I got great friends. I got a great friends that just picked me up, family that loves me. I got a job that can help pay to fix it. Yeah, you know what? It's not so bad. When we just think of ourselves and we think about how unhappy we are, we focus the attention on ourselves when we know this life is about other people and relationships. Being unhappy steals that charity and steals that love from other people because I'm just thinking about myself. We just think about ourselves. Gratitude can help change that. Gratitude can say, you know what? Maybe you've treated me bad today, but I'm so grateful for our friendship that we've had our entire lives. I'm so grateful for our friendship we've had the past couple years. It's been really a blessing in my life. You know what? Maybe, maybe, yeah, my car broke down, but I'm just glad I have a car. I know a lot of other people there don't have cars. I see people taking the bus when I drive. 
to work. I'm grateful that I have a car. This is so, this is so, such a blessing in my life. Let me think about the other people maybe don't have access to cars. Yeah, you know, maybe I don't have as much money as I wish I had. And, you know, I want a little bit more to put in retirement, a little bit more to, to spend on myself. But you know what? I know people, I'm just grateful for what I have. And I know people don't have that. And this Thanksgiving, people's, people's meals are smaller, are going to be smaller than mine. Some people are going to be at soup kitchens. I'm grateful for what I have in my bank account, in my life. And I want to be able to serve the people who have less than me. Gratitude helps put the attention on other people and not be so self-centered. So I think Thanksgiving is a great holiday because it's a lot of fun, football, friends, family, food, but it's also a great checkpoint in the year to really have a profound look at ourselves and our lives and be truly grateful for everything that we have and stop complaining about all the things that we wish we had or the things that were different. Spend this Thanksgiving truly being grateful and stop complaining about the things we wish were different. Let's do that with each other. I promise I'll try. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, Scout's Honor, whatever the Scout's Honor is. Scout's Honor. Let's truly be grateful this Thanksgiving. Truly, truly, truly be grateful. And take a look deeply at our lives and be grateful for what we have. And I promise you, it will change your perspective and it'll change your emotions and it'll change your state of life and state of mind if you're grateful. Every single day, grateful. Every single day, grateful for what you have, what you've been given, what you've not been given, what your failures have been, opportunities to grow. Be grateful for what your life is currently. Staying present in what your life is and trusting that God's going to provide in the future for you. So that's why I think this Thanksgiving is such a great, um, yeah, such a great opportunity to, to, to do that. And maybe you're seeing this or listening to this after Thanksgiving and you're saying to yourself, okay, well, you know, just had a crazy Thanksgiving. I don't, uh, you know, I, well, a good message, but now it's December and we're, you know, we're on, on to the next thing. Every single day, we should be taking moments to be grateful and to help change our perspective. Every single day, we should be fighting against that poison of wanting more, that feeling of just being so self-centered, that feeling taking us away from the present moment and not enjoying the daily bread and daily provisions we've been given. Don't let the past or the future steal the happiness from the current moment. Don't let wanting more steal the pleasure of enjoying what you've been given today. So Thanksgiving is a great, great, great time to be grateful to God, grateful to your friends, grateful to your families for how we've all supported each other, how God, what God has given you. So that's why I think like this, you know, this Thanksgiving, don't be so unhappy. That's why, you know, the title of this, you know, this Thanksgiving, don't be so unhappy. And Thanksgiving is the perfect opportunity to make that mindset, sh mindset shift of gratitude. Do it today, right now. If you're hearing this, do it right, right now. So I hope you all have had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Enjoy the food, enjoy the friends, enjoy the family, stay present, be grateful. It's gonna be a great holiday. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you all for joining in uh, with me today. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend it with me, talk with me. Um, you know how much I appreciate all of you. You know how much I appreciate all of you listening and telling your friends, telling your family about it. Um, it just like, it, it's, it's incredible to know that people are listening um, to what you know I'm saying as I'm sitting here in my kitchen slash living room slash TV room, you know, just chatting to this, this camera. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you all so much. I'll see you all soon. Have a great day. Peace. Bye.